Today, we're going to be making grappling hooks for our games, just like the ones Widowmaker uses in Overwatch. We're going to be making these in Unity in just under 8 minutes. Let's get straight into the video. So here is a quick example of the grappling hook that we're going to be making in this tutorial. So in this tutorial, I've already got a working character controller in my scene, set up with a Cinemachine camera that just follows the character around. I'll start out by creating two new scripts, one for the grapple and one for the hook. Inside the code, we'll want to work on the implementation for our hook first. So I'm going to start out by creating the hook speed variable, and we're going to make that one serializable. Making it a serializable field lets us keep the variable private while still exposing the value in the editor for us to edit. I'm going to quickly add the rest of the variables that this class will need, being an instance of the grapple class, a rigid body, and a line renderer. Next, we'll want to replace the start method with an initialize method, which we can call from our grapple class later on. We'll want to pass in two parameters, being the grapple and the shoot transform. So within our initialize method, we're going to set our transform forward equivalent to our shoot transform forward. We'll do this to make sure that the grapple always shoots straight. Then we'll want to set our grapple variable to be equivalent to the grapple that we pass in, and we'll also want to get our rigid body and line renderers off of the game object. And finally, to actually shoot the hook forward, I'm going to add some explosive force to the rigid body when we initialize our hook. We can simulate explosive force with the add force method by passing in impulse as the force mode. So the next thing we need to do within our hook is check for collisions. So because our hook is going to be a trigger collider, we can use the method onTriggerEnter that Unity provides. So that passes in information about the collider that the hook has hit in the variable called other. So I'm going to set up an if statement here that we'll complete later. And within this if statement, I'm just going to grab our rigid body, turn off gravity, and make it kinismatic. I'm also going to call a method within our grapple class that we'll create later called start pool. So within the conditions of our if statement, we're going to perform some bitwise magic. Basically, what we're going to be doing is grabbing our layer mask of grapple, which is going to be added on all of the objects that we want our grapple to interact with, and checking that its value is not equal to zero which if it isn't, we know that our grapple has hit something. Now I've provided some more information in the description down below on layer masks and bitwise operators. So if you're interested, check that out or let me know if you want me to cover it in more detail. Okay, with all the heavy lifting out the way, I'm gonna go ahead and update our line renderers positions to make sure that we've got a clear line between where the grapple starts and finishes. So within update, I'm gonna call line renderer.setPositions and I'm gonna fill that one out with a new array of vector threes. All of the values within the array represent a new point within the line renderer, but we're only going to worry about the first two. So I'm going to pass in the hook's transform position and the grapple's transform position. Then I want to extract that one out to a local variable to be a little bit more clear to my future self. So with that done, our hook's working, so let's jump into the grapple class. Once again, I'm just going to set up the variables at the top first. It's just going to be stuff like the grapple speed, the hook prefab, getting the rigid body. So I'll just skip ahead a little bit. So with that done, I want to set up my initial variables in the start method. So I'm going to get the rigid body, and then I'm also going to set the pulling variable to false, which it should already be by default, but I'm just going to add that safety check in. Next, I want to add that start pull method we talked about earlier, and I'm just going to set the pulling variable to true within that method. Then I'll create the destroy hook method, which we'll be using later on in the code. We'll want to check if the hook is equal to null, and if it is, return. If we've gotten past that check, we'll want to set our pulling variable to be false, destroy the hook's game object, and also set hook to be equal to null. Now let's set up creation of the hook. So we can do this by creating an if statement within our update loop. We'll want to make sure that our hook is equal to null, and that we get input.mouseButton down 0 which is essentially just looking for left click input. If these conditions are met, then we'll want to create our hook. So let's go ahead and set pulling to false. Then we'll want to set our hook variable. We can do this by calling the instantiate method, passing in the hook prefab, and then getting the component of type hook. Once that's done, we'll want to call the hooks initialize method, passing in this grapple, and also the shoot transform. Once that's done, I'm going to create a lifetime for the hook. So I'm going to create a new method that returns type of I enumerator, and I'm going to call it destroy hook after lifetime. Now within this method, I'm going to yield return a new wait for seconds, where I'll pass in the lifetime of eight seconds, after which we can call the destroy hook method. Now within our update loop, I'm going to start a new coroutine passing in the method we just created. 
And then to make sure that we don't already have any existing coroutines queued, I'm going to destroy all coroutines just before we start them at the top of this update method. So the next thing to do will be implementing the logic for the grappling hook pull. So I'll quickly perform a check if the pulling variable is set to false or if our hook variable is set to null, in which case we'll want to return out of the update loop early. So then if we've made it this far, we know that we can implement the pull logic here. So we'll create another if statement checking for the distance of the player to the hook. If the distance is shorter than our stopping distance, we'll want to destroy the hook. Otherwise, we can go ahead and apply an add force method to our rigid body. I'm going to grab a normalized vector in the direction the player is going towards the hook and multiply that one by the pull speed. And then we're going to want to set that mode, the force mode, to be equivalent to velocity change. Setting it up as velocity change will help us achieve that cool anti-gravity feeling you get when you're playing as Widowmaker in Overwatch. Now the final thing I'll do is create a way for us to destroy the hook when we click our right mouse button. So I'll add an else if statement at the top of our update loop and in there I'll check if our hook is not equal to null and also if our input.getMouseButton down one is equal to true. And within that else if statement we'll just want to destroy hook. So back in the Unity scene, the first thing I'll do is create a new layer for a grapple. So I'm just going to go ahead and name that one grapple, just like in our code. And then I'll make sure that that's assigned to my floor game object in the scene. Next, I'm going to select the character controller game object in my scene, which is the spaceman. And I'm going to attach my grapple script we just made. Then I'll add a new sphere 3D object into my scene. Scaling it down a little bit, I'm going to make sure it also has a rigid body and a line renderer component. We'll also need to make sure that the collider is set to is trigger mode so that it interacts with our on trigger enter method properly. I'll play around with the line renderer to reduce the width of the line and also maybe give it a material and a color. Then I'm going to rename the game object to hook, also adding the hook script that we just created. With that done, I'll turn my hook into a prefab and delete the game object from my scene. And finally, I'm going to add a basic black texture to my hook to make it pop a little bit more. Navigating back to my character controller in the scene, I'm going to link the hook prefab to my grapple class. And then I'm also going to create a new empty game object, which represents the shoot transform, which is just where the hook is going to be instantiated at in our scene. I'm going to position that one at the player's head and also rotate it a little bit so that the hook has a bit of an arc to its movement when it's created. Now with that done, make sure we rename the game object and then link it back to our grapple class. Now one mistake I quickly want to fix, which was actually something I overlooked in the character controller tutorial, is fixing this rotation when we hit a wall. So we're going to navigate to our rigid body and we're just going to lock the rotations on the X and Z axes. That'll stop the character from going out of control when we hit an edge. So with that done, we've got a rough grapple hook system working, similar to the one in Overwatch with Widowmaker. Now I know this grappling hook is super basic, so feel free to spice it up with some visuals. I feel like this system would have worked better if we had a proper third person character controller or a first person character controller. I'm thinking of doing a proper third or first person character controller tutorial series in the future, so let me know if that's something that would interest you guys. I can then maybe also extend that functionality to create some abilities, integrating this grappling hook functionality into those character controllers. If there's anything else you guys want to see for tutorials, just let me know in the comments down below. I'd just like to announce that I've recently released my community Discord. I'll be sharing all my latest uploads on this channel, so if you guys are interested in following me along, definitely check that one out. Also, you'll be able to share your own projects, ask questions anything game dev related, or just come hang out and play some games. I look forward to seeing you there. As always, smashing that like button or hitting subscribe down below lets me know that you're enjoying the content, so feel free to do so. Thanks for watching and have a great day.